Hello and welcome back to the Intro to BioPsych webinar series. I'm Alexander Shearer from SRI's Bioinformatics Research Group. Last time, we took a look at the search tools you can use to maneuver around the BioPsych family of databases. This time, we're going to focus on one database, EcoPsych in this case, and we're going to take a look at the big picture. How do you get a whole view of an organism in a BioPsych database? To do that, we're going to want to move up here to tools. And I'm going to remind you quickly that our current organism is selected over here. We've selected E. coli K12, in this case EcoPsych. Tools gives us access to a bunch of viewing and comparison tools that let us understand single and groups of organisms better. Right now we're going to focus on those viewing tools. The comparisons will come up in a future webinar series. These tools are a good way to visualize the whole organism in a way and on a scale that you can't really appreciate when you're looking gene by gene, reaction by reaction, or protein by protein. So let's look at what we have available to us. Here in the tools menu we have the genome browser, the cellular overview, and the genome overview. The OMOX viewers and comparative analysis will come later. Let's start with the genome browser. The genome browser is a zoomable, navigatable representation of the genome. It's also to scale in the sense that genes are shown with their appropriate proportional lengths where they are in the genome. So if I look down here and see that THRA, B, and C are all almost back to back, but there's a space before YAAX, that means that's really how they're arrayed on the genome. Similarly, you can see the direction here. Let's talk a little bit about the display features on the genome browser. As I just alluded to, the pointy end of a gene shows the direction of transcription. Left to right for THRA. A triangle, as indicated up here in the legend, is a protein coding gene. This sort of knife edge thing is an RNA gene. If something's crossed out, like this, it's a pseudogene. A contiguous shadow behind a set of genes shows that they're in the same operon. The genes having the same color shows that information also. We also show transcription start sites and terminator stem loops. So you can see a start site and a terminator. And you can see that we actually label the sigma factor that's associated with a given transcriptional start site when it's known. You probably also notice that things are showing up as I mouse over stuff. So when we're moused over a gene, we see the gene name, whatever it codes for, in this case a subunit of a sodium proton transporter, and intergenic distances. How far is it from the other nearest genes? Also, each of these genes that we're currently sitting on, we can click on. And this is one of the big take-home lessons for the BioSite collection of databases. You can click on a lot of stuff. So obviously, anytime my little pointer turns into a hand, I can click on it. As I mentioned, you can navigate within the genome browser. You can go left, and you can go left some more. And right and so forth. And we have different degrees of navigation, a short jump, a bigger jump. You can zoom in and you can zoom out. We actually have what's called semantic zooming, meaning you can zoom to a different level of information detail. Right now we're at what we call the genes level. I can go up to the operons level by clicking over here on operons. And now we are at a level of detail that focuses more on operon identity. And it also emphasizes why it's useful to have stuff show up when we mouse over things, because now you can't see, really, some of these gene names. What are these? Oh, there we are. It's SGCR. We can also zoom down to the level of sites. And now we're up close and personal. And we can use these zoom tools for higher resolution zooming, you know, shorter jumps. 
as you may or may not have noticed while all this was going on, we have this genome bar up here that actually shows what portion of the genome we're looking at and has a little red swath here to show, again, visually what portion of the genome we're looking at. So right now, it's a narrow area. If I go up to the operons semantic zooming level, then suddenly it's a big swath because we're looking at that big a chunk of the E. coli genome. 